Hey friends, welcome to Meals with Maria. I've gotta be honest, this is my third time recording this because every time I record it, it looks like I'm not wearing a shirt. <laughs> Cause I'm like getting too close to the camera and I'm like, oh my goodness, what is going on? I need to check this ahead of time, it's silly. Anyway, I have $10 or less dinners for you today. I know prices are crazy, gas is going up and there's like nothing we can do about it. So our budgets are gonna shrink for food, I think. And in order to make that work and still be able to eat delicious and healthy food, we need to talk about swaps. So some of these I recorded before and now I'm gonna talk about how we can take things that are less expensive and swap them out in the meals so that we can actually get them down to hopefully less than 10, I mean, they're already less than $10, but even less because anywhere we can pinch pennies right now is gonna help. So I hope you enjoy them. They are delicious. They are relatively healthy. And I just hope it gives you some great ideas on how to swap some things out and be able to make your budget go a little bit further. So this first recipe is for taco zucchini boats. You're gonna need four to five medium sized zucchinis. Now I would say this is about two pounds of zucchini. And when I'm looking for zucchini on sale, I wanna find it between 99 cents and $1.29 a pound. Anything more than that, you really don't wanna pay. So we're gonna wait, wait until everything is on sale. So if you see zucchini on sale, that might be a good time to make these taco zucchini boats. Now, if you're not on a budget, go ahead, make them anytime you want. But I'm just saying budget friendly, you wanna get them for like 99 cents to $1.29 a pound. And then you wanna cut them in half and then you're gonna hollow out the center of them. Now you could go ahead and use the center and put the, set that aside and use that for something else. You could make zucchini bread out of it. You could put it into some sort of like veggie scramble, make like a tatui, or you could make a vegetable stock. So any pieces of the vegetable, you see how I cut the top of the zucchini off. You could also set that aside, keep those in bags and then make vegetable stock. And that's a great way to you know save money and make a stock for soups and other things. So you wanna hollow those out to about a quarter of an inch thick. Once all of your zucchini is hollowed out, place them on a baking sheet and then drizzle some olive oil over the top. You can use regular vegetable oil, that would be fine too, whatever you have, and then a little sprinkle of salt. And you wanna chop up one onion. The recipe calls for three quarters of a cup of chopped onion. I think one onion is just about right in this case. It's about a medium size. Onions are something that I love to keep on hand. Buy a whole bag when they're on sale and they make everything taste better and more vibrant. And they're a very budget friendly option to add to any meal that you're making. Now, if you wanna go even more budget friendly, you can always just swap out for onion powder if you're really, really on the cheap. But I feel like onions are something you should keep in your pantry and you should always have it on hand because they are so inexpensive and they do add so much value to so many meals. Now I'm just mincing up about three tablespoons of fresh cilantro. Cilantro is another very budget friendly herb. It comes for about 99 cents most of the time and it goes with almost everything. It adds a pop of flavor, but I also know that some people do not love cilantro. I heard it tastes like soap to many people. So it's like a love it or hate it thing. If you don't love it, don't put it in. If you do love it, then I would recommend keeping cilantro on hand every week because you can add it to all of your different Mexican inspired dishes, which are usually less expensive. While cutting and getting our meat ready, you wanna put those zucchini boats in the oven at 400 degrees for 18 to 22 minutes until tender. So we're actually gonna cook the zucchini boats before we put the filling in. And now I'm just gonna saute up this onion for about two minutes over medium high heat. Next, I'm gonna add in ground turkey. So I have about, I think I have a little over a pound of ground turkey. The recipe does actually just call for a pound, but you know you can get those like 20.6 ounce containers. So I did add all of it in this case. Now you can use ground beef if you have that, or you could take this whole container of ground turkey and slit, put it in half basically. So use like three quarters of a pound or grab one of those tubes of ground turkey you can get at Walmart. I think it used to be $1.67. I haven't been there in a while, so I don't know how much that's changed, but you could use one of those. You could cut one of those in half. And so what you can do is you can take about half the meat and sub it out for more beans. We're gonna put beans in in just a moment. And so I'm just adding in all my spices at this point once my meat is cooked up. I have um, some salt, pepper, a tablespoon of chili powder, a half a teaspoon of chili powder, a teaspoon of ground cumin, and then I'm putting in a half a cup of tomato sauce, as well as a half a cup of chicken broth, and I'm using my chicken bouillon here. And I have my can of drained 
black beans and this is where if you're using less meat go ahead and put like two cans of black beans in as well as two teaspoons of minced garlic now again minced like garlic is so cheap it's a great thing to keep on hand just like onions because it's so inexpensive and it adds a lot of flavor to your meals but if you don't have it you can use just regular garlic powder and that can save you some money too so i feel like with this meal you can really get away with doing you know say it's two pounds of zucchini that's two dollars maybe three and then use like a three quarter of a pound or a half a pound let's go down to the bare bones and say you're using half of one of those rolls from walmart and that's going to be like 80 cents let's bump it up to a dollar so you're looking at three dollars total there and then two cans of black beans at 50 cents each four dollars and you've got your spices hopefully you already have those on hand a small can of tomato sauce can be 40 cents so you're looking at four dollars and 40 cents and you can get cheese at the dollar three for a dollar 25 so that's five dollars and 65 cents maybe for this meal add cilantro six dollars and 65 cents so you can see how it goes up you just saw there i was actually taking some lime juice and squeezing that on top as well as putting my minced cilantro over top and then followed by some shredded cheese and you just want to put those in the oven for about five minutes longer and that will give you this delicious zucchini boats they are so awesome and such a healthy alternative to tacos and just something different you know sometimes you like to switch it up tacos are amazing we love them in our family but i also like to do different things with the same type of stuff that would be in the tacos you can see my husband here serving up our children i think i was up feeding the baby at this time but luckily everything was all set and ready to go our next budget meal is a shepherd's pie and i will tell you that this is like the best shepherd's pie recipe that i have ever tried so i took one and a half onions i'm trying to get to about a cup of chopped yellow onion but you really can't go you know too crazy with this like have as much as you want it's delicious then you want to peel one and a half to two pounds of russet potatoes i have two rather large ones right here that i am just peeling up and then i am going to dice them and those are going to be for the mashed potatoes on top of the shepherd's pie now, you do not have to use potatoes if you don't have them. Potatoes are a great budget uh, item. They are relatively inexpensive. I can usually find five or 10 pounds for two to $5, and they go so well with almost every meal. But if you don't have them or you don't have the time or whatnot, it is super easy to just buy the potato flakes. Those are also extremely inexpensive and they still taste great on a shepherd's pie. So I'm just gonna cook my onions up over a medium high heat with some oil. You can choose the oil of your choice. It's not gonna make a huge difference as far as the meal goes. You just wanna cook the onions for about five minutes, stirring occasionally. Then you wanna add in your pound of ground beef, or you could use ground lamb, or you could use ground turkey. Now, turkey can be a cheaper alternative, especially like I was talking about those tubes of turkey, and I find that especially in shepherd's pie, it is extremely cost-effective and delicious tasting, like not a problem at all as far as a swap goes. I have also used lentils in a shepherd's pie and I will post the video down below where I do use a lentil as an alternative in a shepherd's pie. It's an extreme grocery budget challenge and it can save you big bucks. Not my absolute favorite way to make it, but it is good, especially if you like lentils. It is a great alternative. I was able to buy some ground beef on sale for I believe a $2.49 a pound and put it in the freezer. So that is the ground beef that I am using in this video. And then to your ground beef, you wanna add in a half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of dried thyme leaves, two teaspoons of dried parsley flakes, one teaspoon of dried rosemary, and a half a teaspoon of ground pepper. Let the meat and the spices cook for about six to eight minutes until the meat is fully browned and make sure to stir that occasionally. You can see that I'm mashing mine up with this fun little meat masher. I will put a link to this down below, but I've also heard that they have them at the Dollar Tree. So I haven't seen them myself, but that is quite a good deal if they do have one. To my cooked meat, I am adding a little bit of this Mushroom Company Umami from Trader Joe's just because I thought it would taste really good in this, and it did. So just an option if you have like an extra spice that you like to add, go ahead and add that. And then once it's cooked, we're adding one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and two cloves of garlic. I'm gonna stir to combine and cook for about a minute. To the mixture, you wanna add two tablespoons of all-purpose flour and two tablespoons of tomato paste. Now, as I mentioned before with 
garlic, go ahead and use garlic powder. If that's all that you have, you don't have to add fresh garlic. It'll still taste delicious. Now, tomato paste is very inexpensive and a great thing to have on hand as far as budget meals go. It can add a lot of depth of flavor to meals that you make without adding a lot of extra cost. If you open a can of tomato paste and you're like, I'm not gonna use the rest of this, you should throw that into a small plastic bag and put it in the freezer. It freezes really well and you can just take the frozen tomato paste and put it right into whatever you're cooking and it will cook up in like two seconds. So I usually try and make like two tablespoon containers of tomato paste out of those cans so that I don't waste anything. If you really don't have any tomato paste, you can always use three tablespoons of tomato sauce in place of one tablespoon of tomato paste. You may wanna just cook that down on the stove first and that will still give your food a lot of depth of flavor and it should be a pretty good swap out. I did it the other day and it was no problem at all. Just wanna stir this until it's well incorporated and there are no clumps of the tomato paste left. At this point, you wanna add in all of your frozen veg. So I have like a whole container here of peas and carrots and green beans. I think the recipe actually just calls for one cup of mixed frozen peas and carrots. And I said, forget it, we're putting it all in. I don't mind putting like a full mixed vegetable in. If you're like a traditionalist, I get it. Like go ahead and just use the peas and carrots, but this is what I had on hand. So I put the whole thing in. You also wanna put in one cup of beef broth. Now I usually keep beef bouillon on hand because that is so inexpensive. Here is what the filling for the shepherd's pie looks like when it's all finished and oh, the flavor on this is incredible. In the meantime, you do wanna cook up your potatoes. So I know we made those a long time ago, but I just boiled the potatoes in a large pot. I covered them with water and I brought them to a boil, reduced it to a simmer, and then cooked the potatoes until they were fork tender, about 10 or 15 minutes. Drained them and added eight tablespoons of unsalted butter, about a third a cup of half and half, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, a half a teaspoon of salt, and a quarter teaspoon of cracked ground pepper and you may wanna add some Parmesan cheese to this as well. I'm just using a hand masher to mash these up. I know some people use like a hand mixer and that helps a lot. Again, you don't have to do this. The problem with making homemade mashed potatoes and the cost of things is that butter and milk are expensive and you could definitely swap out the butter for margarine or something less expensive, maybe put half the butter in, but I mean, the butter is like what makes it taste delicious. So that's kind of what's tough about making like your own homemade mashed potatoes. The mashed potatoes are cheap, but adding milk and butter to them really does add when you could just use like a potato flake and add water. And that's a lot more cost efficient. So just your choice, however you want to do it. I'll tell you the buttery mashed potatoes are absolutely amazing, but it's still good with a butter, with a flake mashed potato as well. And so we are just going to add in the filling to a 13 by nine. Hello guys, I'm making chipper pie. So as you can see, Julian has joined me for this portion of the video and he wanted to get helping with the shepherd's pie. So he's gonna help me put the mashed potatoes over the top and just kind of dollop the potatoes all over the pie and try and spread it evenly. Once your potatoes are on the pie, you wanna cook this at 400 degrees for 25 to 30 minutes. And you may wanna put a dish below it to make sure it doesn't bubble over because when this does come out, it's like super bubbly and amazing.
So this next meal was originally a Dollar Tree dinner and it was designed off of a 30 minute chicken tortilla soup. So you can see that I have some jalapeno slices that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I have a small container of chicken. Now the recipe calls for like two cups of chicken. I just had the one container, but you know what? It worked out absolutely fine. You can go less on the meat. It's also good, like if you have leftover chicken, go ahead and use that in the soup. I had a container of chicken broth from the Dollar Tree, but again, you can use chicken bouillon, onion powder and garlic powder, and that's in place of the fresh onion and the fresh garlic in this recipe. One can of corn, and that's in place of frozen in the recipe. I said this was a Dollar Tree meal, but that can of corn is actually from Aldi. And my recommendation on this is that you do not actually buy these things at Dollar Tree because they're more expensive. Except for the black beans, those are a dollar, but I think you can probably get those at Walmart for the same price too. All the cans of things are going to be 50 cents at Walmart or Aldi, so that's kind of the way to go. And I'm going to cook up the black beans in an Instant Pot and then make them, but you could totally buy cans of black beans again at about 49 cents each at Walmart or Aldi. And hopefully those prices are still the same. It may have gone up to 60 something, but still a good deal. I'm going to use chili powder and cumin and smoked paprika and you know what if you don't have smoked paprika i'm sure it would still be delicious and then i love these tortilla strips and these are from the dollar tree i guess which is now dollar 25. i still think they're a deal um they're a really nice package of them and they're so fun for making a meal like this and then i realized that i actually had forgotten my cheddar cheese which i did get that at the dollar tree so that's a dollar 25 now but you could um you know use like a bigger package and just whatever you have i mean i wanted to put that on there and then i completely forgot two cans of diced tomatoes now i would definitely not recommend buying this at the dollar tree now because these are now i think i don't know if they went up to a dollar 25 or they're still the dollar but that is a bad deal like you should definitely get this at walmart or aldi for much cheaper so two cans of those or like one bigger can and that is about it. So you can see that there's like a lot of cans here. Really the cost on this is like one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven dollars. Maybe that's assuming that those are a dollar. So if you're getting the cans of things, you may be actually down to like 350 or $4 dollars. So here I am just making my black beans in the Instant Pot. The benefit to doing it this way is that I end up with extra black beans and I can use those for a different recipe. I will make sure to link the black bean recipe down in the description and so here I've just cut up about it, it's equal to like one regular jalapeno diced that's what the recipe called for but I figured that the uh, pickled jalapeno from the Dollar Tree would be just fine I think like diced green chilies would also probably be pretty good in this and so I'm just heating up my Dutch oven or really any pot that you have you want to make soup in and adding a little bit of oil and then I'm going to add that pepper in there now because the recipe calls for fresh if you have it go ahead and use it that's kind of why you're cooking it here it's probably not like 100 percent necessary but i figured i'd get some of the flavor in there if i put that in there and then i'm going to add all my spices so for the spices i'm going to use a teaspoon of garlic powder a teaspoon of onion powder one tablespoon of chili powder two teaspoons of cumin two teaspoons of salt a teaspoon of black pepper and a teaspoon of smoked paprika. Now, the recipe also calls for cayenne pepper, which I am not gonna use because that is very spicy. So I would just put that in the bottom of the pan and kind of mix it around. It kind of brings out the flavor sometimes. And then I'm adding in my two cans of diced tomatoes, as well as my can of chicken. It certainly doesn't look like a lot of chicken, but it actually went really far. Like I felt like every bite of the soup that I had actually had chicken in it, so it broke up really well. And then I'm gonna add my 32 ounces of chicken broth. Again, if you have chicken bouillon, you can just use water and four teaspoons of chicken bouillon, and that will definitely save you money. Drain and add the can of corn, or you can use one and a half cups of frozen corn, and that can be straight from the freezer. You can see in order to get my can of black beans, I'm actually just using the corn can and adding that right to the soup. You can see how many, I had a lot of black beans left after this, so that was super helpful and just adding that to the soup there. You wanna bring this to a boil and cook it for about five to seven minutes until the liquid level looks like a little bit lower. You have a little bit of evaporation there. And if you wanted to have like a more brothy soup, you could always add more water or chicken, um, 
bouillon or stock to that. And then just at the end, you wanted to give it a taste and adjust for any seasoning. If you want to add more salt or pepper, things like that, a little bit more heat, you are more than welcome to. And then I just served it with our delicious tortilla strips. You could serve this with sour cream if you have it. There's also a recipe for taking corn tortillas and turning them into the strips in the recipe that's in the description box. You can check that out. But overall, it was delicious. I want to thank you all so much for watching today. I hope you enjoyed this video and got some great budget ideas for your family. If you like budget meals, I will put up a playlist right now you can click on. And please subscribe and like this video if you haven't already. It really, really helps me out. And I hope that if you subscribe and you hit the notification bell that you will be able to see when my next videos come out so you don't miss any of the fun. I'll see you guys all very soon.